What's up guys, welcome to this pro update. My name is Giovanni and welcome to another Napoli video. So in this video, we're going to review the whole Mercado, the whole summer transfer window for Napoli. Specifically only for them, obviously. So I'm going to be using an article from Italian Football Daily from my friend Daniel. Again, go check out our Twitter page. It's called SSCN America. 600 followers, so thank, thank you guys for all the support. Hopefully this channel will be hitting 500 soon. I really hope. 580, uh, 488 right now, so I appreciate that as well. I'm going to be using an article that he wrote a whole... He wrote a whole review on the whole summer window, so I'm going to be talking about every move we made signing in, and every move we made sending players out, whether it's a loan or, or a sale, or any, everything like that. Um, I'm going to spend more time on some parts more than others, but that's a given. So, let's just start off by saying that, the, you know, besides getting Giacadini and Tonelli to start off the window, it was kind of a, I don't know, maybe a little depressing start when we lost Higuain. It was a big blow for us. And 90, we got 90 mil from him, but, you know, he was our star striker. He scored 36 goals. And, you know, he was the, he was the leader in the attack, and he scored a lot. And, you know, he also created some chances. So losing him was a big blow, and we didn't see it coming, really. And we didn't see it coming where he would go to Juventus as well. So that whole situation just left, you know, Napoli... In, in a little shock, a little shock state right there. Um, but thankfully, we picked that back up thanks to our president, who sometimes I don't like him. I don't like De Laurenti sometimes, I, I, I'll be honest. You know, the whole player image rights thing where he has to own all their image rights and it stops us from getting transfers, that really, you know, gets me angry and I, I don't agree with him all the time on that. But, you know, he made this window very successful. So I'm just going to list out who we, who, who we signed and who we sent out real quick and then I'll get into like depths of it um so in we got Tonelli from Empoli for 10 million euros Jacqueline from Sunderland for a mere one and a half mil which is great uh Arcadius Milik from Ajax for 32 mil which was our biggest signing of the summer money wise um Zielinski from Udinese for 14 we got Amadou Diawara from for, from Bologna for 14 and a half you know, someone to invest in. He's going to be really good in the future. So, young player. Another one, Marco Rog from Zagreb. We got him on loan for one and a half mil. Um, we got Maximovic from Torino on a five mil loan with option to buy next year for like 20. So, it's 25 mil deal. Um, Luigi Seppi came back from Fiorentina on loan. Uh, Lasiki, honestly, you know, I don't really know much about him, but he came back from loan as well. And we got uh, Roberto Insigne back from loan um, also. He was playing for Avellino last season, of sending out. So, as I mentioned before, Higuain, who is a.k.a. now Voldemort, you know, as James would say, um, he went out to Juventus. David Lopez, who was pretty consistent for Napoli, but, like, you know, wasn't, like, too special, uh, to Espanol for four. Um, Mirko Valdifiori went to Torino for three and a half. It's part of that Maximovic deal. Uh, Anduar went to Estudiantes for 455k. Um, I'm going to stop listing the prices now because they're all low. Grassi, Alberto Grassi to Atlanta, uh, Novotny to Sintruiden. I don't even know how to pronounce that, to be honest. Uh, De Guzman to Chievo, uh, Ganahor to Crotone, Uvini to... Uvini went out, Dumitru went out, Zuniga to Watford, Luperto to Provercelli, um, Tutino went out, Gabriel back to Milan. He was with us on loan. Chalaba back to Chelsea, and Regini back to Sampdoria. So... Let's start with um, our attack. So going into the summer, we thought we would have Iguain. He's gone. Um, so we had to bring in someone. And, you know, there's a lot of rumors. We had a lot of links. You could throw in Harry Kane, uh, Edinson Cavani, um, Baca as well, Kali Nietzsche. Uh, we, we were around there with some, some pretty big names. But in the end, we got Milik from Ajax for 32 mil. So... He's a young player. I think he's 22, I said in a video prior to this. Um, you know, he has a lot of upside. He's He has a good stature, a good body for a striker. He's tall. He can, you know, score headers. And he has a deadly left foot. I mean, well, not deadly, but, you know, some of those goals he scores going across his body are great goals. So to have him is good, but we I think we could have done better. But, you know, he's he's young, and he can really develop into something. He can score 20 goals in his head, you know, not 36, but... You know, any, anyone is going to have our time scoring 36 like Higuain did. So, you know, it was a good signing. And then, but the only problem is, is that that's the only one we did sign. Uh, we kept Gabbiadini and that's really it. You know, we don't have another striker besides those two, um, which is our, our, 
our second lacking position, I would say. Um, well, one of our lacking positions, excuse me, because the other one, defensively, we're missing a wing back. Um, we have Gulam, and his backup is Strinic, who I, I don't really like that much, to be honest with you. Um, but we got great depth in center backs. You know, for Albiol's backup, we got Kitty Kess, we have Tonelli, and Gulibali can be backed up by Maximovic now, once he's in, once he's in form as well, um, because he's training and. The only risk with Maximovic is he's kind of injury prone, and I don't know. He's he's had injuries in the past, I believe, with his knees or something. So if I'm wrong with that, correct me. But I know he's had injury problems, so that's always a little scary. And that was a whole saga I thought would never end. Um, but our you know our our depths on the center backs are are great, but the wing backs we lack a little bit. We have Majo on the bench, but he's a little old, you know. So um, having Having no backups is kind of scary, especially when Gulam leaves. We're gonna to have to rely on Srinic for a month, you know. Um, but when Koulibaly leaves for the African Cup, and when he ultimately leaves, because he might actually go to Chelsea next season, um, we'll have Maximovic in there, and he's young enough and he's good enough. He's proven that he can play well. It's just a matter of him staying healthy. And Tonelli is also a very good player from Empoli. He's a, he's a he's a beast. I like him a lot. You know, he's he's very strong on the ball, and he could really make some good tackles. Only. Um, his health is also another issue because he's already been out for for a month, I would say. I, I've tr well, not out for a month, but we had a scare that he'd be out for a month or two. But he's training already, and he can be back, I believe, by October. So that's a good sign. So good defensive um, acquisitions in Tonelli and Maximovic, but we're still lacking a wing back. So that's one thing there. And another striker, we really do need that. But I wanted to put some time aside to focus on the midfield as the last part because getting Rog Diawara... Who else did we get? Um, D Rug Diawada and um, what's his name? Gosh, excuse me for this. I forgot his name. Uh, Jelinski. You know they're really, really, really good acquisitions. The only thing is that they're young players and they're gonna want playing time. So distributing that is gonna be a little difficult because we have so many. We already have a starting lineup of Hamsik, Alan, and Jorginho, and to have, you know, Jelinski. Rogue and Diawara waiting on the bench is kind of a downside, but also we're going to be playing in a lot of competitions. Whether it's going to be Serie A, obviously, we have Copa Italia that they can rotate with, and we're in the Champions League. And you know, God willing, we'll make it very far in that. But if we don't, we'll go to Europa League. So we'll have um, the opportunity. You know, we'll have the opportunity to give them some playing time. One of them might not play as much as the others. You know, right now I probably see. Um, Zielinski getting the most playing time he already has, obviously. Um, and Diawada should be able to play, but I think Rogue will get some opportunity. So that should be distributed. But those three guys are really, really good signings for the future. You know, even if we don't use them this year, if we lose somebody next year, if we lose a Jorginho or Alan, which I hope we don't, but, you know, they won't be here forever. If we can keep our younger players, Diawada was tracked by Bayern, so he's supposed to be amazing. He's a very good player. He's already started for Bologna. He already has Serie A experience. Rog is a great player, Croatian player. Um, you know, I've seen some highlights. His free kicks are nasty. And, you know, his potential to be a top midfielder is there. So and we And we have him. So that's a great thing to have. And Zielinski, who's also played for Udinese as well, he's already been used to the Serie A. And he has a link up with, with Milik if he plays when he gets his chance. And we've seen that when he comes in, he links up well with him with Mertens as well. So, you know... That that midfield that we built, De Laurentiis did a, a huge job on that, a great job on that. So, you know, hats off to him for that. He really did focus on that, and he did well. Um, but those are our biggest signings. You know, Jacqueline also, I, I don't want to leave him out. He's he, We got him cheap. He's 31, but he's really hardworking. You know, I, I, I read the reports. I see him training, and he's a hardworking player, and he can do some service for you. When he comes on the field, he's going to play for you. He's going to give his heart out. So, you know, whether we use him a few times sparingly, whenever he's on that field, he's going to give it his all. So we have a lot of depth, um, depth that we've never have we've never had before. The only thing we're missing is that one wing back and another attack, another striker in, in the attack. Because when Milik is resting, you know Cavadini can score goals, but if he if he's if he's going to have a bad season, it's going to be a problem. So you know we'll see where it goes with that. But overall. You know, as Daniel gave on his article, he gave a um, a grade of a B plus. So I would definitely give, I would agree with the B plus, B or B plus in that range. Um, the only reason I want to give him an A minus or an A is because of the 
we lost Iguain and we didn't really replace him with a big name. So we don't know where that's going to go. Um, and that extra defender that we don't have. But besides that, the depth we have and going f you know, into the future, I'm very excited about this team. They're really young in the midfield. You know, even our center back positions with Donnelly, Maximus, they're not too old. So if we lose an Albiol, because we might actually lose Albiol as well, because he's not renewing. So Albiol is probably going to be gone. And Cleveland, likely the Chelsea can still happen next year. If not in January, hope not. Hope not. But, um, you know, in the summer next year, it might happen. So having those two and then getting, you know, two backups from there, we'll think about it there. But t having Tonelli and Maximovic being able to step up into those positions, um, I think is good for this team. So, yeah, I would definitely give it a... A B plus overall, um, you know, as Daniel said, we could have went after Casares, who can play both wing back positions, but we didn't. Yeah, I don't know why no one's going after him. He's a free agent. Um, you know, maybe we we can. I don't know. I don't think so. But yeah, I I, I definitely would give it a B plus overall. So I'm sorry if you know this video is a little all over the place. Um, I I really wanted to get this done, but I've been so busy with school and work that I you know. I couldn't even get my ideas all together. So I'm just going off the top of my head. So please, you know, bear with me with that. Um, but after this video, shortly after, hopefully by tomorrow, by the morning, I'll have a Napoli Palermo preview for you guys. You know, just a quick rundown. Not as long as this video. This video is very long. So I'll end it right here. So I'll give the whole Mercado a successful rating of a B plus. I'll agree with Daniel on that one. So again, go check out our Twitter page, SSC in America. 600 um, followers on there. You guys are awesome. Um, please go follow that page and also go check out Sempre Podcast on Twitter and also listen to them, you know, on iTunes or um, they can give you a link. Um, our buddies Darren and, and uh, James over there, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, they're constantly interacting. I've known James for a while, so they do amazing, an amazing job. You know, it's an entertaining podcast. If you're a Notley fan, you have to listen to it, especially if you're an English speaking fan. You're going to, you know, zoom by. They can talk for half an hour, an hour, two hours, and it'll always be interesting. And me and Daniel will actually feature on that. Uh, in a few episodes so it should be very fun so again thank you to james for that opportunity thank you to you for all you guys for supporting hopefully we get to 500 soon sorry this was a bit a bit long but i had to talk you know about certain things and you know and whatnot like that so thank you very much i'm gonna exit this video for tonight please subscribe and i'll see you guys this weekend ciao